first of all, what are we looking for when we're tasting a wine? In professional wine tasting, well, there's two main dimensions for wine, white wines, acidity and smoothness, which is a combination of like sweetness and alcohol, and a third dimension, which is tannins for red wines. Now, tannins are um, substances that are found in grape uh, seeds, skins and stems, and they are antioxidants that you also find, say, in nuts, and are important for aging for the aging of a wine. They are the kind of substances that leave you a, a, a sensation of, of, of dryness in your tongue. There's a standardized procedure for wine tasting and a standardized procedure is a holistic learning experience that really engages all five of our senses. And so we start with the sense of touch. You, you kind of hold to your to your bottle, you're gonna feel if it's uh, cold or if it's warm. If a wine is cold, you'll, you'll have an enhanced sensation of acidity and possibly of the, of the astringency of the tannins and you have a lowered uh, perception of the smoothness. Vice versa, in a warm wine, uh, you'll feel more smoothness and less acidity and less tannins. So, you know, you want your champagne ice cold, but if you're drinking a big bold Cabernet, you want it room temperature. Now, the second sense that it's engaged is the sense of hearing, right? You crack open a bottle of champagne and you wanna hear if it's sparkling. Thirdly, you need to engage your sight. A ruby red color will indicate that the wine probably has a high level of acidity as opposed to a sort of a plum darker color which would indicate uh, a, a low level of acidity. By the same token, in a white wine, uh, a greenish color will indicate high levels of acidity versus a uh, kind of a golden color as uh, an indication of, of low acidity and a certain sensation of, of sweetness. Now we're getting into the really interesting thing, so the sense of smell. Uh, 70 or 80 percent of what we perceive in a wine is in fact dictated by our nose. By swirling a glass, uh, you expose your wine to more oxygen and you also warm it, thus allowing to liberate more aromas that you will be able to smell. Our nose is an incredibly powerful tool, but you have to build it. Uh, you have to associate events or things with their smell. And then, as you taste something, you're going to be able to recall that smell and to find, for example, I don't know, berries in a red wine or fruit in a white wine. The first sip that you take is in fact only to get your mouth accustomed to whatever is to come. The second and third sip are the ones uh, that are really going to be crucial. And you have to let air inside your mouth and you have to kind of move the wine around in your mouth so that again the warmth and the oxygens are going to liberate again, all of the flavors in the wine. Uh, after the fourth sip, it's just drinking. Your mouth is saturated. There is one additional dimension to this, which is again a, sense, a certain sense of touch. Our tongue specifically perceives the body of the wine. Uh, you will feel a certain sense of warmth or a certain sense of being filled with wine, and that's an effect of the alcoholic contact, what we call the body of a wine. Uh, the tannins interact with your saliva and essentially leave your uh, mouth uh, drier, your tongue drier.